Congressman, it was 10 days ago that you called for Vice President Harris to replace President Biden at the top of the ticket. The president said again tonight he's not going anywhere. What did you make of his speech tonight, and does it make you change your mind? Uh, no, I, honestly, I didn't watch a whole lot. I just listened to it as, as I was sitting here. Um, but I, I think the fact that a lot of the, almost all of the uh, Michigan representatives, senators, candidates uh, were not there, I think tells a lot of us exactly what was happening on the ground. Now, he's obviously going out. He's going to try to convince people, which is, is fine. He has a right to absolutely do that. Um, but when I think about what the swing state numbers are looking like, Anderson, and in these swing states, the Biden campaign has spent already. The Trump campaign and the outside groups have not spent already. And you think about the debate, you think about the George Stephanopoulos interview, you think about the Putin and Trump comment last night, and you think about nearly a billion dollars behind those ads, that is going to shift public opinion. And that's what guys like me are really, really worried about as we move forward into this campaign with so much at stake. Kate, I'm wondering what you made at the congressman's point. And also today, the head of the United Auto Workers urged Democrats not to, quote, put our heads in the sand and hide from reality. Well, the congressman may be right that some members of the delegation weren't there, but look at the voters who were there. I mean, ultimately, it's the voters who are going to decide this election. And I think you had an incredibly raucous, energetic crowd here that was really feeding off what the president was saying. And I think, crucially, you had the president really prosecuting the case against Donald Trump. I mean, that's been a lot of the sort of the outstanding question over the last, uh, you know, now almost two weeks since the debate has been, is he going to be capable of driving that message? Is he capable of taking it to Trump? And I think you absolutely saw tonight that he, he was, and he made a really aggressive uh, case on, uh, you know, the economic front. He really, you know, drove on, you know, Donald Trump uh, is, is for the big corporate interests. I'm for you. You know, he had a really sharp argument there and delivered it passionately. So, you know, look, I think there is no question that some of the swing state polling has moved uh, since the debate. I think it would be foolish to deny that. Uh, but I also think the Biden team's theory of the case from the outset has been when this race, uh, you know, comes into focus in the fall and people see the binary choice between Joe Biden, who's fighting for them, and Donald Trump, who only cares about himself, who spouts all sorts of crazy nonsense, who, you know, wants to take away your freedoms and your rights, who supported an insurrection on January 6th, uh, you know, that people are going to to vote for Joe Biden. And, and I think that there is time for Biden to make that case. And I think if he does what he did tonight repeatedly in the swing states, he's going to be in a much better position. Actually, one of the, the difficulties, uh, you know, you can have events on a teleprompter uh, or even in the press conference last night where he was able to speak about foreign policy uh, and for, for a very long period of time. I've talked to a lot of people who would very much wish Joe Biden was the candidate, but are holding their breath every time he has an event, fearful of what may happen, and watching it in part to just see if anything happens. Is that tolerable for the rest of the next? I mean, it, it's whatever happened on debate night, there's no reason to think it might not happen again, because we still don't know what happened on debate night. Yeah, I mean, he was on teleprompter during the speech, but he also did like two other components of that trip that he was not on teleprompter. And I got to say, I watched the whole CNN. We broadcasted the whole event of him meeting and greeting with voters. And he was pretty funny to me, if you ask me. Look, let me tell you when I hold my breath. I hold my breath when Donald Trump talks about what he would do in Project 2025. I hold my breath when I remember Donald Trump being the president of the United States, and I heard babies screaming because he had separated them from their president. I held my breath when I was sitting in the home for a year by myself because I'm a single woman, and I wasn't able to interact with people because Donald Trump told us to put bleach in our system instead of actually dealing with a worldwide pandemic. I hold my breath when Donald Trump tells us when neo-Nazis are marching in the streets of Charlottesville that there are good people on both sides. And I hold my breath looking at the Democratic Party saying, Folks, we got a choice. We have a hundred and what thirteen days before election for the most consequential uh, election of our lifetime. Let's make our decision. You had an opportunity to run other people last year. You chose not to do that. That is not Joe Biden's fault. That is your fault. So we are in a situation right now. I'm not saying it's wrong for people to be disappointed with Joe Biden's 
uh, performance in the debate. But yesterday, today, he is coming out. He is rallying voters. And when you actually look at the polls, the, the race really has not changed that much since the debate. So we need to stay focused. I'm holding my breath. The Democrats get themselves in line, make a decision what we're going to do so we can start talking to voters about the real threat, which is Donald Trump. Congressman, what do you say to, to that argument, which, which I've heard a lot from, from Democrats who say, look, anytime you are talking about problems that President Biden has, you are not talking about, you know, issues that President Trump, uh, former President Trump has, and that's wrong for you to do as a Democrat that, who doesn't want Trump. Uh, so, Congressman, what do you say to those people? Say, why are you you know, adding more attention to the, the problems that President Biden has, why aren't you only talking about former President Trump? Well, two things. One, and I don't disagree with anything that was just said. I completely agree with it, and we want to get that message out. I would just say that a major aspect of being loyal to anybody in any relationship that you're in, including the one that we're in right now, is being honest. I mean, honest undergirds loyalty. And to see what we saw during the debate, to see the George Stephanopoulos interview, uh, you know, to see what happened in those two slip-ups last night, and to know enough about modern-day politics and modern-day media that that's what's going to be covered, because that's the narrative now, is whether or not Joe Biden's going to make it through an event, how's he going to mess up, how is it going to hurt our standing in the world? How is he going to be able to go against Putin? And the main point is, why, you got to be honest, because that's part of loyalty. The other piece is, we want this campaign to be about Donald Trump. And it's not about Donald Trump right now. That's what we want. And so put Kamala Harris in there. Let her prosecute that case. Let us let go of all this negativity and all these questions and let's get someone in there that can actually prosecute the case. Anderson, I cannot tell you how many Americans, and you know this, you've been reporting for how many years? Americans are dying for generational change. We've been having these same stupid fights since the Vietnam War. And it's time we look at those double haters uh, in the polling. They don't want Biden, they don't want Trump. As Democrats, we have an opportunity to give them somebody different. Let go of this negativity. Let's get a message that is elevated, that's aspirational, that can really tap into what's best in America, whether it's AI or blockchain or you know chip manufacturing. How do we light this country up? And we can't do it if we, if we don't have generational change. And that's my concern. And you put a generational candidate in for the Democrats right now, someone like Kamala Harris, who has the kind of skills and chops and experience that she has against Donald Trump, we will blow him out, we will win the House, and we will have a good chance of hanging on to the Senate. Our base will be juiced, young people will be juiced, and we'll have a great opportunity to get in these industrial states and make the case to working class people, whether they're white or black or brown or gay or straight or men or women, they're gonna come our way. Kate, as you know, Cena, Jeff Zeleny reported, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi, former President Obama, have spoken about the future of President Biden's candidacy. A, do you think the, the president would listen to either of them if, if they were to go to him and suggest that, that he step aside? And also just what, what is the, I mean, what, how long can this go on for? I mean, what is the time how long, I mean, because th it seems like this discussion can go on endlessly because for every event that the president does, you can see if you think he is, uh, you know, impaired, there are things you can point to and, and for evidence. And if you think he's just fine, there's plenty you can point to as well. So it, from just watching events, it could go on for as long as people want to talk about this stuff. But from the, the political calendar... When does this have to stop? A decision has to be made. Well, first, can I actually just respond to the congressman's sure. point? Because I think this argument about generational change, look, we had an open primary in the Democratic Party in 2019. Candidates of all uh, ages and generations ran very competitively. Democratic voters chose Joe Biden. They liked Joe Biden's vision for the country. They liked what he was going to do to bolster the middle class. They liked the argument he was making against Donald Trump. And then he came into office and made good on so many of those promises uh, that he made on the campaign trail. So I don't think that there is this uh, this notion that somehow Democratic voters and 
moderate swing independent voters who are going to help decide this election uh, are somehow only fired up by the notion of generational change. They're fired up by uh, what Joe Biden has been able to accomplish and his vision for the country. So I, I think I would just dispute that fundamentally uh, that's what uh, that there's an outcry for that right now. Okay. Uh, you know, to your question, Anderson, about how long this can go on, I would argue not very long. I think we have had two weeks now of uh, people expressing themselves, raising their concerns. I think it has been a valid conversation. I think Joe Biden has been very, very clear he's not getting out of this race. He's given a number of performances over the last week that I would argue satisfy what people have requested of him, including what we just saw him do right there, which is essentially light up an entire gym in a swing state of people chanting and excited about his candidacy. So, you know, I would argue this has got to come to an end. We need to unify behind the nominee and let's go turn all of this fire and energy on Donald Trump and not on each other.